When you deconstruct Negro logic, it is on a level of insanity far beyond anything you've ever seen. I dare to say, Bizarro, in his backwards nature, is not as back is not as screwed up as a ne as crazy as a Negro. That's insane. I dare to say, Forrest Gump, for all of his low IQ, is less insane than a Negro. I dare to say, this guy, the Joker, Gotham's clown prince of crime, is less insane than your Negro. Because when you dissect your Negro logic, you'll find all three of these examples that I made make more sense than your Negro and his insane, downright disturbing level of thinking. Because when you take apart Negro logic, and I'm going to do that in this video, I'm going to take apart this Negro logic with these three examples. Because all three of these examples actually follow some frame of logic. And then you compare it to Negro logic, you're going to find that he's on a level of insanity far, far beyond Bizarro, far beyond the handicapped disabilities of Forrest Gump, and far beyond the Joker. And I'm going to start with Bizarro. Now, Bizarro is a Superman character, and in Bizarro's world, everything is backwards. And even though everything is backwards, everything still follows a frame of logic. I mean, everybody is still following. This is the old school Silver Age Bizarro for you comic book fanboys. Not, not, not the modern, you know, for a while, kind of low IQ Bizarro that was in the Superman animated series. I'm going to talk, I'm going to go back to the backwards Bizarro. You know, the one everybody knows. Even he follows a frame of logic. And in his frame of logic, you know, he has a society, his PS world, a bizarro world. And in the bizarro world, everything is the complete opposite of our world. You know, goodbye is hello, hello is goodbye. Um, he, when he's doing superhero antics, he's Clark Kent, but when he's, when he's Clark Kent, he's bizarro. It, it follows a frame of logic, and that's the way the bizarro world works. And it's a world with businesses and everything functions. There's a structure and a framework. And this is Bizarro World. But this is how Bizarro World works. Um, but in the Negro world, if we compare the Negro world, there is no structure. There is no framework. You know, everything doesn't go forwards or backwards. It's a world, again, with its own logic. And I'll get back into that as I continue on in my thesis. Now, with the Bizarro world, again, Bizarro would look at this Negro. He would look at him, he would look at his world, scratch his head, and say, what am wrong with Negro? Why, why, is, why am Negro dysfunctional? This is what he's going to say when he, if he were to ever enter our world, enter the black community. I mean, you think about this Negro, you think about the things that he says, the things that he does, the approaches to life that he follows, and his logic doesn't follow any logic. It doesn't follow any sequence that any normal, you know, even irrational thinking person could follow. And that's why I would say Bizarro would have a problem with this Negro. And he would scratch his head and look at this black community and go, just what am wrong with these Negroes? And in my next example, you know, I'm going to talk about the movie Forrest Gump. Now, Forrest Gump was a movie that, that, that Tom Hanks starred in in 1994. It was an Oscar-winning film for Best Picture, I think, and he won Tom Hanks won Best at his second Best Actor Oscar. And Forrest Gump was a was a tall tale about a handicapped man, you know, a man with a low IQ. And Forrest Gump, in spite of his low IQ, he graduated high school, he went to college, um, he did a stint in the military, he met all sorts of so-called great people, and then when he came back home. To his community, he built the Bubba Gump Shrimp Company. Think about that for a minute. Just think about it. Forrest Gump, man with a low IQ. Again, he finished high school. He finished college. He did a stint in the military. He went back home, started his own business, had a business that he built in the community. You know, employed people like um, the Gary Sinise character. And the black and his black friend, the Bubba Gump Shrimp Company. 
using resources in his very own community. Think about that. Man with a low IQ. And that's why I say Forrest Gump would look at this Negro and go, well, I think he's stupid or something. Seriously, I, I, I know these imitations are funny. Are meant to be, they're not meant to be funny. They're meant to present a, a, a fact. Here's a guy, 60 IQ. I mean, I know it's a movie. 60 IQ gets an education, builds a business, employs people in his own community, participates in all of these concepts, you know, your pro-black Afrocentric Negroes talk about, um, participates in all of the concepts, you know, all of your armchair Negroes talk about, you know, your buffer Negroes. He's participating in group economics. He has a sense of self-worth. He knows how to build his own community. He invests in his own community. He invests his money into things like the Apple computer. And if you look at Forrest Gump, man with a 60 IQ, doing everything that some of our most educated, most intelligent Negroes can't even think to try. I mean, there are people with bigger degrees than I have, and they still can't understand how to make something work. But then you have this character in a movie with a 60 IQ who makes everything work perfectly. Think about it. This is why Forrest Gump would look at this Negro, shake his head, and, and just go, and look at this black community and go, what's wrong with these Negroes? They must be stupid or something. Why can't they build any businesses on their own community? Why can't they, why can't they, uh, you know, stop fighting each other? I get along with, with my friends. I take care of business in my own community. This is what Forrest Gump would say when he'd look at this, at this Negro community. This is what he would say. Because he would look at this Negro community in its dysfunction, in its chaos, even with his 60 IQ, he would still be able to find resources in, it, in that community to build his own business. And, you know... It's, it's just disturbing, you know, to think that these two examples that I'm giving you, Bizarro and Forrest Gump, can figure out stuff that some of our most intelligent, college-educated people with doctorates just can't figure out. You know, they, they and I'm going to go into this Negro logic and this Negro reasoning because you have to understand how his logic truly works because, again, these two examples right now that I'm giving you, pretty much show you how backward, how, how insane this Negro's logic is. Now, the third example I'm going to give you relates to the Joker. Colonel Prince of Crime, you know, certified psychopath, completely insane arch enemy of Batman. Now, the Joker, for all intents and purposes, is a raving lun homicidal lunatic. But the Joker can put together a plan to do what he needs to do. He can set goals. He can set a direction. He can lead people like Harley Quinn and henchmen. But your Negroes, when you compare them to the Joker, homicidal maniac, who is a certifiable nutcase, a certifiable nutcase, can do all of this, can plan all these elaborate schemes that, you know, somebody as cerebral as Batman has to figure out and foil. But your Negro, he cannot, you know, put together a structure or a framework, you know, to build something with. He can't put together a structure and a framework. He can't set goals. He can't set a direction. But you look at this and you go, a, a backwards guy, a handicapped guy, and a lunatic can figure something out but this Negro can't figure out these things. I mean, if the Joker went to the black community, he would just turn the Joker mobile around. Him and Harley Quinn would turn the Joker mobile around and say, nah, we ain't gonna mess with these Negroes. They, they, too, they too crazy even for me. I mean, that's what he would say if he walked in there. I mean, if the, even if these Negroes came to Arkham Asylum, the Joker, and all the Batman villains would pack up and get out of there because if these in Negro inmates started running the asylum, the place would go crazy. I mean, because you don't know crazy. Negro crazy is a special brand of insane. And when you understand, if you're a guy like me who follows things and tries to break things apart and understands, you know, sequences and how things follow, because as a writer, you have to understand 
everything follows a, a, a straight line. And with Negro logic, it doesn't follow a straight line. Having grown up here in the South Bronx and dealing with people, you know, black people and, you know, dysfunctional people of other, other races, Negro logic is a special brand of insane. It's a circular logic. It means it goes, it goes from one point to the next point. It goes around and around and around and around and around and around. It does because regular logic is a straight line. Negro logic goes around and around. And circular logic is a special brand of crazy. I mean, again, Joker follows a straight line. He wants to he wants to commit mayhem and chaos in order to get a laugh. He's the one laughing. We're supposed to try to understand the joke. Bizarro, he's backwards. Um, his whole world does not work like our world, it f but it still follows a frame of logic. Forrest Gump, low IQ, still follows a frame of logic. He may not process as fast as we do, but he still follows a straight line frame of logic. Negro logic, again, goes around and comes around, goes around and comes around. I mean, I, had, I experienced this on my blog and dealing with Negroes, and this is how they, 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 they wear you down. They give you this insane circular logic where they try to go around and come around. And then as you walk away from them and their insanity, because I call this the paradox um, trap, this is something many Negroes and also Manginas also do. Um, they, 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 as, you, as you walk away from them and their insane circular logic, what they do after, you walk, after they get you to walk away from them is they go into their shaming tactics and they say, you're doing them wrong. And they make themselves out to be a victim. This is the circular logic of this Negro. He goes around, he comes around, you walk away from him, he comes to you with shaming tactics. He makes himself out to be the victim. And then, after he's made himself out to be the victim, because that's, his, that's how his codependent plan is, he makes himself out to be the victim, and he hopes that you come back to the table to, you know, continue to negotiate with him. The whole thing is if you continue to negotiate with, with this guy, he's going to continue to drag you down in his circular arguments, going around and coming around, and, you know... Pretending that he didn't hear the answer, pretending he didn't hear the question, and there, there, there's no debating him because there is he does not want an answer. He, because again, it goes back to the thing, Negro does not want solutions because if he has to answer a question, you know, because if you answer the question, the issue is solved. He doesn't want the answer to the question. He comes at you with another question. And when he comes at you with that other question, it's not meant to get another answer. It's meant to make you crazy. You see, you have to understand how he operates. This is crazy making. Um, because I read about this about 10 years ago. They were talking about nice guy syndrome. And I started to understand, you know, how it related to Negro logic. And Negro logic, again, is the same pattern, same psychological pattern. Where you answer their question, they ask you another question. They ask you another one. They continue to, and then every answer you give them is always considered wrong. This is another part of the paradox trap that this Negro operates, is that you give him an answer, either, it's, it's, a, it's a crazy trap, because I also go into this in my book, Anginas, um, because this is the paradox trap. It's like, every answer you're going to give is wrong. And he uses one answer to launch into his shaming tactics, and he uses the other answer to tell you that there's something wrong with you. This is Negro logic, and... If you don't understand it, it'll make you crazy. It'll, it'll, it'll frustrate you. And this is what the Negro wants you to do. He wants you to get emotional. He wants you to get frustrated. And this is how he takes control of the situation. This, this is why I'm talking about how Negro logic is completely insane. He takes control of the situation through making you crazy. And this crazy making is... You know, why nothing ever gets done in a black community, because this is what he does. He goes around, he comes around, and then after he's done all of this crazy making, then, and only then, does he trick you into, into, going, into giving you some crumbs, into getting some crumbs, because he doesn't want a solution. Because, again, when you ask a question, a direct question, you get a direct answer. When you ask a Negro a question, you get 
either another question or an answer written in a riddle. And as you try to decipher this answer, he goes and uses that as a way to segue into his shaming language, into his head games. Because this is Negro logic. Negro logic, again, it makes no sense. It only makes sense to the Negro because it's completely backwards. It, it's beyond backwards. It's not even backwards. To say it's backwards, bizarro, again, bizarro is backwards. And to say it's that the Negro is slow, no, Forrest Gump is slow. But even they follow a frame of logic and can create something. But this Negro can't create because he doesn't have, he doesn't understand process, he doesn't understand framework, he doesn't understand structure. His world is completely insane. And whenever you present logic to a Negro, you're going to lose your mind. I can honestly say that because you, you go to him with any type of logic, reason, fact, he will look at you and tell you that it's not true. Again and again. Just tell you that again and again. Everything that you present to him is either wrong and he's always right. And if you don't agree with him, oh my goodness. I can just tell you that from personal experience. If you disagree with him and his insane circular logic, you're in for a nightmare. This is why many people just avoid the Negro. That's why many people like myself just can't deal with him because he doesn't want solutions. He doesn't want to use reason. There is no reasoning with him. There is no attempt to solve the problem because he doesn't want to solve the problem because he gets his needs met by blaming and shaming others and making himself into a victim. And the only way, the only people who deal with him are the enablers who exploit him. But, you know, understanding his logic is the only way, you know, I'm trying to explain it because I've lived through it and understood it. I have dealt with this Negro on a regular basis. So his logic is, is even beyond even Mr. Mistleplick from Superman, another character again. His world is, is full of absurdities, but still follows a frame of logic. But, you know, I mean, he's like on a sixth, maybe seventh dimension in, in levels of insanity. I mean, it's, 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 on a, it's a world all its own, this black community. I mean, that's, when, when you look at it, you know, it will just, it just mind boggling. You, you, it's not a world of straight answers or direct answers. It's a world of, you know, pontificating guys in armchairs, you know, sitting there and talking a problem to death instead of taking action. A bunch of other guys, you know, your pro-black, Afrocentric Negroes sitting there talking about how much they hate the white man, but then, you know, reaping all the benefits from his white woman. You got these black women, you know, sitting up there talking about how much they hate the black man and how they can't find a good man, yet they continue to, to pursue the worst men in their own community. And then you have, you know, these other Negroes who are just, they're in a world all their own. And all of them, you know, it's, the, it's a world that if you look at it from the outside, you just go, ugh, nothing makes any sense. I mean, you present stuff to them, you present anything that does not fit the narrative of their white liberal slave masters, and they'll look at you and go, that's not black. You present, you know, like I have presented ideas. It's coming from a black man. It's not black. Like I did a couple, like last week with the um, ISIS Kickstarter. Present ideas to the Negro, you know, it's not black. Even though it's created by a black man. And white characters like the Black Panther and the Falcon and Storm, created by white men, are considered black by this Negro. But black characters created by a black man, not considered black. I want you to... This is the type of logic that this Negro operates on. This is the type of insanity this Negro operates on. Again, he's, he's chock full of all sort of mental illnesses. This, this is the, the clear example of what I call what they call cognitive distortion. And the other thing that I talked about previously, about the black woman who says, I can't get a man, yet continues to pursue the same type of dysfunctional man, it's called cognitive dissonance, where you say one thing 
and to do another. And this is why your Negro logic is beyond insane. And I can honestly say that, you know, from personal experience and then just experiencing what I've seen, you know, trying to interact with this Negro, trying to present solutions to the Negro, and, and even just, even in blogs I've written, just re reading the comments section, the insanity, I mean, just the going around and coming around, they, they, they don't, they don't follow a framework of reason, logic, you know, basic structures, you know, a writer like myself, Everything follows a framework, a, stru a straight line, you know. Story has a beginning, a first plot point, a second plot point, a climax, a conclusion. Everything follows a structure. When you, The structure is what you wrap the form around. But in the Negro world, there is no structure. There is no form. It is a world of complete chaos. And you can, you can just look at the, many of the things that they do, like saying that Black Lives Matter... Yet, for 25 years, black men have been killing black men like roaches. But black lives matter. You know, saying that, you know, education is the key to success, yet black 70% of black people don't finish high school. 70% so of black men here in New York City don't finish high school. Um, you know, you just look at it and go, this is madness. And... It's, a, it's, the, it's the craziest thing when even Bizarro, Forrest Gump, and the Joker are more logical than your Negro. And Negro can't look at himself and say, you know what, there must be something wrong with me. Um, in his world, everything is perfectly fine. You know, I mean, in his world, everything is fine. His world, he's completely, he's insane, but he's perfectly fine. He believes he's perfectly fine. The rest of us who understand insanity, understand that, you know, everything he's doing is pushing him backwards. It's like a downward spiral. It's not, I won't even go say to say it's backwards. It's a downward spiral that's going in a reverse direction. And you, we, I just, you just sit there as a black man myself, you know, you wonder where the bottom is. And because every downward spiral has a bottom. And when you look at the Negro, his circular logic, going around, coming around, going around, coming around, going around. It's like, it's like a toilet drain or a sink drain. Just it, 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 it's, it's going down, and you keep wondering, where is the bottom, and when is it going to stop? And that's the one thing that I've pondered, you know, over the course of the last couple of years, looking at this downward spiral with this Negro, is I wonder when... When is it going to be the bottom? When is the Negro going to wake up? I mean, usually, because that's the rock, the rock bottom point is where a person, you know, makes that change from victim to survivor. And they start moving forward and they start pushing up. With this Negro, you know, there is no bottom. And the only thing I could say many people can do with him and many of these mixed nuts in the Negro community. If you're pretty much functional like I am and can pretty much think pretty fairly well and, you know, is to try to work around them like I have tried to do because there's nothing much you can do with this Negro. I mean, you can talk to him, he don't understand reason. You can try to reason with him, he don't understand reason. Again, doesn't understand reason, doesn't understand logic. You can, I mean, you could probably even beat the crap out of him he still wouldn't understand it. He's in his own world, and the only thing you can do is work, try to build your world around his and hope he doesn't. And then, if you can, if you can, try to get away from it as fast as possible because, again, there is no solution with this Negro, and the only solution is to get as far away from him as possible. 